next round of the ado adoption extraordinary. Uh, last time we made it to the end of the first section. What the first section was all about, well, year of Ramses the 11th um, and the Nefer family, in other words, Nanefer, no, Nanefer, Neb Nefer and his wife, um, Nanefer, essentially documenting arrangements for 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 the will and testament namely uh, if um, in the event of uh, neb nefer's death uh, he has adopted his wife and so basically all his property will go to her because she is now also his child in other words his daughter um, so the usual splitting with uh, with other relatives in other words his uh, his brothers potentially also sisters um, is not going to take place but the entire property is going to go to her that was the that was the purpose of this arrangement that's what we went through the last time or the last two times an opening section with the date um, which happened to to coincide with uh, what is it like the 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 appearance of Ramses the eleventh before was it Amun? I believe so, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes, before Amun. Um, but at the same time, like more on the in the microcosmos, we have them setting up this will and testament, and then comes the whole thing that he's adopting her as his daughter since he has no other children, and then finally a long list of um, witnesses, a lot of whom are. Um, let's see where we have the title. Here we have it. Uh, so, Ichrai Ich, in other words, a stable master. Um, also, some of them were definitely foreign. Some of them are described as, uh, as Shaddan, um, which were one of the subgroups of the Sea People. But they're showing up here basically as, uh, I guess, friends and neighbors, um, also um, witnessing the, um, the Will and Testament. So that's as far as we got the last time. Um, and well, there are two pages more, but the first thing that happens is the date changes. As you can see here right away, we're now quite a bit in the future. The last time was, if you look at that, uh, Chespet, Chespet Wa, or Wa, uh, so year one of Ramses the 11th. And now we're at, any takers? Year 18. That's correct. We're at year 18. So um, how do you say that? I think med chamanu or something of that nature, uh, vowels to be disputed. But yeah, year 18. Um, and now how do we want to do this? Do we want to do we want to look at the hieratic? Do we want to look at the hieroglyphs? Um, I see one vote for hieratic. <laughs> uh, well, both. Yeah. I, I'd like to look at both. I just like right. to look at, you know, compare. Okay. Okay, look, which side do we want to start on? Uh, Horus and Seth style with the hieroglyphs, or do we want to go full? Horus and Seth style. Okay. <laughs> All right, good enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Then let me turn on the um, the annotation tool so I can actually type out what we see here. Um, let's try to go through the beginning comparatively quickly because the, the really interesting story is later. But, well, let's, let's set the scene. Um, Maybe let's do the date until yeah. Let's maybe go go until here, if that's okay. Any takers? I can try. All right. So it's Arbit one, and this this Shemet. Oh, hang on. Let me do the Hesped eighteen first. Yes, you're right. Arbit about one. Um, that is. That's supposed I think it is Achet, Achet even, though, Achet. even though it's written with the sh yeah, with the Shah. It's Achet. Um, embarrassing. <laughs> so yeah, Achet. Which uh, month is that? Is that winter? No, that's four. Uh, um, so I know that Pro is winter because it's still winter in Coptic. Um, so let's get the seasons here together. Come on. We can just skip it. It's not that important. Mm, here we go. Uh, the traditional translation. Achet. Achet inundation, flood. Uh, Peret emergence. Yeah, that makes sense. And then Shemu being um, whale. Harvest. So yeah, Peret winter. The thing that I've never been able to understand, and if one of you knows more about that, would be great. Um, 
So they have these official titles, but then I also understand that the calendar, because the year was not exactly 365.25 years, right? But but 365 uh, days, but 365. So you have like a water day offset every year. Um, I thought these seasons were shifting over the centuries. In other words, like they don't really line up with the actual um, with the actual um calendar seasons until like way into like greco-roman times when you have calendar reform and they're basically trying to fix everything i thought that's the way it is um i could be wrong on that though i think i remember they having leap years but yeah is there a leap year process or does it does does the year does the year move this this is what I'm referring to. As the, this calendar year is a wandering year. The season of the calendar slowly rotate through the natural solar year, year blah, blah, blah. Um, um, I've read that before. I've read the opposite, and I have not quite made up. I mean, there is this whole thing trying to use the... the, the Soti star... How was that? Um, I thought there were attempts to basically tie astronomic phenomena to the calendar and thereby by figure out exactly when the cycle, for example, started when it was first set up. But if nobody has anything in detail on it, then then let's just skip on. But basically right now we're looking in Achet, which officially is the flood or inundation. Um, but I don't know what to think about the September to January part. About, I mean, if it's true that it's a rotating year, then this should only be true part of the time, right? Well, I mean, technically, we could use that, what is that date converter that we were using in the Ptolemy reading group and see exactly what day it was. Um, yeah, but that one's only like for, for late day, later. Oh. It's not, doesn't go back that far. Uh, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Huh. But yeah, I think it was Greco-Roman and like, I don't lake period as well. But in any case, so it's Achit. Let's, let's go with that. Okay. Is it uh, 10 afterwards or that doesn't make sense? Second, then is, is there a number 10 after Akkad? Right. So what's missing for the 10? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Su, day. And since you already ah. have, you have a day in Akkad uh, just as the determinative, that's often doing double duty for the, technically it should be Akkad with a, with a little sun disk and then another uh, sun disk for, for Su, but you can just write that in one. So it's day 10. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. Herhem, Ensu, Nebitawi, Meni, Setem, Hetepre. Hang on, hang on. Perhaps. Uh, You're doing great, just too fast for me. Uh, what was it? Men, uh, go again. Meni, Setem, Pen. Oh, uh, take this part first. It's shoe. That's backwards. Uh, could it be what else could it be? So it could be Shu or it could be one other thing. Who which god carries this? Right. Mart. That's right. Mm -hmm. So Maat men re set up and peta. You got it? With one okay. little thing. I think it's men maat maat re era re. Um remains the maat of re or something like this. Um just like in, what's another good example? Men uh, for example. Uh, so the, the re is in front because of um, of honorific transposition. Um, and yes, setep. Then ank vajab seneb sare nebhau. Hang on, I forgot my transliteration, so sorry about the mixed. Um, seneb. Yes, nebhau, that's right. So in year 18, the month of flood, day 10, before the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, then his name, life, prosperity, health, son of Ra, lord of appearances. Oh, did I, did I miss the son of Ra? You're right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yep, lord of appearances, or maybe lord of diadems, as Gardner has it, um, in the the the... Um, was that a stone that we're currently reading? I think it was, what did we, what was it translated into there? Lord of Crowns or something of that nature? But yeah, I think either of any of those would be valid. Okay, want to go on? Okay, another name. Um, Mesahaure. 
Um, stop here, first part. Okay, Mestre. Um, Mestre, or if the if the, the day was in front. Uh, Ramis. Okay, so Ramses. Ah, okay. <laughs> Ramses. That's right. Uh, how uh, um, is it User? Uh, oh, Vasset. It's uh, Vasset, yeah. Vasset. See, it looks almost the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mary, Eamon, Nutcher, Hekka, Iuna, Diank, Jed, Ren, uh, Henen, Heru. Hang on. Uh, I, I know I said let's do it quickly, but. <laughs> Um, you had nature, yes, Rekka, you know, right? You yeah, know, you know, the uh, Ankh, yes, Jet, uh, Ren, N, uh, uh, Ren, Hen, N, uh, not quite, not quite. Uh, what is this year? That's eternity, isn't it? Correct, and that's uh, uh yeah, I like that's what's the way. I like to call it Enech simply because that's what it is in, in Coptic. Um, so, Erenech, I guess. All right. So, Grounds is uh, Lord of Grounds, then, or appearances um, in actually, Heliopolis. No, uh, that's not Heliopolis. That's um, further down. Much further down. Ah, for a completely blank there. Uh, Thebes. Thebes, or, yeah. Okay. Beloved of Ammon, the god, the ruler of Heliopolis, is given life uh, eternally. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Got it. Great job. Um, Hieratic or go on? Hieratic. Okay. <laughs> so let's have a look over here. Um, can I move these? No, I can't. Okay, that's annoying. Let's try to do it this way then. Um, so let's take a look. So here's our Hespet, which the other day, by the way, in one of the videos I had mistranscribed. I fixed it in the video, but uh, so Hespet with a ch, no, with a ch, it's not a, um, it's not lapis lazuli or whatever Hespet is with a D at the end. Uh, this is H dot S B T, assuming that that reading is correct, of course, always with that, that reservation that there's a lot of scholarly a disagreement. Okay, so here's our our rampet sign basically with a little T and with the solar disk. Then this is the I can make it a bit bigger. Um, this is our number ten, and this here these are each of these strokes symbolizes four. So this is eighteen basically. Okay, this sign is super weird. Um, had to look that up. That is our Abed one, um, our our month one, but into like one ligature. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think I've seen something similar for like month three or something. If we, oh yeah, that was in the in the uh, in the Rosetta Stone, wasn't it? They also had some kind of abbreviation for this. Uh, so calendar abbreviations. Then we have um, our Achit. So that's just that that field thing on top, um, right? This here, the T is ligatured into it, and then here's like a generic little dot. This is our number ten here. Interesting. Um, that also happens in um, in demotic. I think when you have the this is what the ten should look like, but they drag this down and it becomes something like this. Um, so that's our day ten. What else do we have? A very nicely written out Cher. This here is our majesty. The majesty is very often or normally written like with a dot and then something like this. So that's what we have here. And the majesty has a determinative stroke. That's that. Um, and of course, because it's divinity, right, or at least royalty, it gets the, um, the bird on the stick as well. Okay. This part here should be clear. That's our our Sue, our reed leaf, and uh, not reed leaf, um, which we call it. Yeah, but it's a, it's a reed, isn't it? It's a reed, um, the royal reed. Sedge. Sedge. So sedge. Well, sedge and reeds. Thank you. You're right. You're right. You're right. He who belongs to the sedge, right, or something. Um, What's a sedge? Something like a reed. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it's that's so. So there, there is the National Park Service in the U.S. Actually, has a uh, has a, a little, like what would you call it? Like a little rhyme. Um, what was it? Um, geez, sedges have edges and reeds are round, or something of that nature. Hang on, I, I should know this. Uh, um, I've never heard that word before. Oh, it's it's another one of these grass-like plants, basically. Um, let me see. Sedges, sedges have edges, rushes around, grasses have nodes all the way to the ground. That's what it was. So basically, supposedly with that, you can tell them apart. Um, but for me, they all still kind of look the same, to be honest. But I'm not a biologist. So it's these kind of grass-like plants that you'll uh, yeah, find all over the world. Um, so that's a sedge. Um, then our bee. Here are the two wings of the bee. Um, then our neptawi. Oh, yeah, nothing too surprising apart from the fact that the that there are actually three little canals underneath the um, the tawi. So it's not double, but it's actually written as a plural. Also plural strokes. What else? Um, this one's interesting. I think we need to talk about this a little bit. The men. So here's our cartouche, right? Our cartouche is starting for the name of the king. Um, the name was Men Madre. You can see the re quite clearly. You can see the mat clearly. But what's going on over here? So the men itself, let me write it out first, like in lots of detail. So technically, it's this this box with the little little strokes on top, right? Um, this here gets simplified. This gets simplified into like this kind of thing. And then you have the box itself, left, right, and then they are actually filling it in. And that's how you get this shape. So this here is the part on top. Then comes the left hand side of the box, the right hand side of the box, and then like a stroke in the middle. And that's how, by this time, they do the, the men. And you'll see that a lot, uh, obviously, because, for example, it would be in, in the name Amun, for example. Um, so that's what that is. And then underneath is just the N, the normal waterline N. So far, so good? All right. Let's see what else we have. Um, so that was men ma'atre, then setep and ptach. This is all written alphabetically, so nothing... Uh, too crazy, bird on a stick. Then what's going on here? Uh, oh yeah, that that is just our normal uh, uh so just the life health prosperity. Hard to see because it's a bit fragmentary here, but that's clearly an S at the end, so that's what it is. Um, then what do we have here? That's our sari. So this is the this is the the, the goose. This is the day. Um, and then that must be Neb something. Ah, yeah, Neb Ha. Uh, let me show you this one because it's hard to see here. Mm. Here you can see it much better. So how do they do, how does he do the Ha? He does it like this. I mean, it should be what, what we're expecting is something like this, right? Um... That's sort of the, the hieroglyphic shape. Um, there's a stroke here. Then there's this. So that's the top part. And then underneath you have one, two, three, and the stroke at the bottom. So that's how that's constructed. Um, and it's easier to see on this page than on the next page. If you go down, if it lets me, if you go down, I apologize for all the mess on the screen. Let me turn that off in a moment. But basically, here we have the here we have the nap, and then underneath we have this. Now, if you look very closely, there's actually a, a U also hiding in there. So let me go back to what's on the left hand side. That's basically what we have here. So there was a determinative stroke. Um, 
burn on a stick and then nap how a lot of appearances i think we said or but or diadems and of course that gets a burn on a stick as well okay let me clean up all this mess Aurelia, really, I have a question uh, for the Hieratic. Yes, um, do cartouches get closed in Hieratic? Say that again? Do cartouches get closed off? Uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, so what you'll often see is you'll always have to, well, yeah, I think you normally have to lead like this, right? And then in the end, you could see you could see something like this, or you could see just like a stroke. But since normally you have the live... Hell, um, prosperity, health thing at the back. That very often just becomes basically like this, this four-stroke thing. It's like a a little forest of strokes at the end of the of the cartouche, and it's sometimes hard to tell what's supposed to be what. Often the S is spelled out, so you have the S, and the rest are just like sort of like random strokes. Often you find that in the transcription then indicated like this. Like if you look at the hieroglyphic transcription, you find that. And sometimes you'll just see three strokes, which basically means the closing is missing. Um, yeah, because you sort of know what, what's supposed to be there. Make sense? Cool. Other questions? If not, let me go on a bit. So we have um, we have Rameses. That shouldn't be too surprising. Here's our mess, double S. Um, this here is the Ha I was just talking about. So you can see it quite clearly here. Underneath is an Ein, the arm. Then a, um, a W. You can sort of recognize it. Um, and I have no idea what the last thing is supposed to be, how you read that. Let me see what's in the notes. Um, oh, that is a that's supposed to be a um, a Y one a book roll. So down here you have an Aleph, uh, an Ein. Sorry, you have a W, a quail chick, and then this here supposedly is a book roll because the book roll fuller version would be right, like this, right? But when you're short of space, you can always abbreviate it to the Z like thing. Um, okay, so ha um. A M Waset, there is an M here. Mm. Oh yeah, this is a bird on a stick. I was just wondering what is this? It's a bird on a stick. So Ha M Waset. The Waset scepter is written like this. So this here, two little strokes on the on the upper right, and then basically that kind of odd stick. Um then this here could be a dot, could be a T. And here's our, is the city glyph. So let me go over to the other side. So it's basically this, this is how it's written. Okay, what else? Um, bird on a stick, Mer, so far so good. Mary, double reed leaf. Mary, this year is interesting. The Mary is written with a A2 man at the end. And the way that works is basically like that. So one vertical, then here the hand that goes to the mouth, coming down to become the legs, and then this here is like the front legs to finish it off. Front legs, that doesn't make sense. We're not talking about dog. But you know what I mean, like the, the, the leg that is in front. <laughs> um, so Mary, for whatever reason, that gets a bird on a stick. And then here's Amun. And it's good that we talked about the Mun before because... I mean, it's really hard to see here, but that's exactly what we talked about. It's just really hard to to make out. It seems to have a little dot on top, and I don't know why that is. I've seen that on the other page, too. Okay, but Mary Amun, of course, the god Amun also has a bird on a stick. And then, and then, this looked like a nature to me. So that's nature, bird on a stick. Um, this here is the Heka, the, the ruler, and this here is a very tall Q. If you look at, we, we know this one already from Horus and Seth. In Middle Egyptian, it would have looked like this, the Q shape, basically that, that triangle. But as you go to Ramesside times, 
it becomes this very tall shape, and that's what that is here together. It's a divine ruler, so again, put on a stick, and Yunu, the city, or On in Coptic. Okay, it has a new jar. It has a... I'm assuming that's supposed to sit to be the city down here. What else should it be? Kind of hard to read. I'm not sure why... Oh, because it's the lord of the city, I guess it gets another another divine determinative. Here's how you write D. I don't think we had that before. I mean, obviously though from hieroglyphs. D what? D anich. This here almost looks like... like... Uh, Demotic already, like basically, this is our our life, our Ankhglyph, and then here's the little n, here's the ch. Later, that will become just a very big ch. So, did they ligature the the placenta in with the wave of water right there? It just like a little, it only like a curve, like a circle, it's like a little curve. This year, right? Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's the n, and then that's the ch, and eventually that becomes. Eventually, it will look like this. <laughs> That's where we're going to end up. But yeah, you're right. Right now, it's like ligature in, into the ch. And then this is our jet. Um, the ta in the jet has, has like three little dots underneath. And ultimately, this is an er, er enich. The nech is not very nicely written here. It's better on the previous page. The way it should be is like ch, then a sun disk, and yeah. All right. So far, so good. I hope that... So it's understandable, but I wouldn't have picked this text as the as the first text to, to practice hieratic on. It's a little bit harder to read, especially also, I try to find a better photo. This is the best I have. Um, it's not all that great. All right, then I would say let's continue. So we've set the stage. We know which year. This is 18 years after the first part. Um, so then now that we have the date, what actually happens? Any takers? I'll go. <clears throat> Uh, Harupen. I'll let you get your keyboard. Yeah. All right. Harupen. Uh, Jedet. And Hari Ich. Hari Ich. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Nebnefer. Nebnefer. Chana mm -hmm. Hemet F. Chana Hemet F. Um, uh, Oh Oops. God! Sorry about that. Sh uh, sh Shemai. Shemai. Or Shemit. Shemai. Something like that. Yeah, I guess the T is gone by this time. It should have a T, but it's not there. Mm -hmm. Um, and Sutech. That's right, and Sutech. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Um, Seperu. Seperu. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mary. Yeah. Spero Mary. Well, how is it officially transcribed? I um, don't know. Let me see. Meru. Uh, Ellie has Meru. Meru. I'll go with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, the, what are these little do, little dudes doing here? I mean, normally they're two, right? That's why I checked. Yeah. Like, normally you would think this is a Peru Med two, but apparently it's Meru. Um, not sure why it has two, honestly. Oh, this is a place name. You got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I won't worry about it then. Uh, Ren Nefer. Renefer, yeah. Renefer. Maybe we stop here? Okay. Uh, uh, so today, mm -hmm. um, Janet and Harry, sp um, spoken by, maybe, come back mm -hmm. to that, um, the, what are we calling him, the, the head of the um, stable, stable mm -hmm. chief. Stable master. Mm -hmm. Stable master. Mm -hmm. Um Neb Nefer, mm -hmm. uh, with his wife, mm -hmm. uh, singer of Seth mm -hmm. in um, whatever this place is called, uh, Seperu, Seper, how, how is this anglicized? Uh, Sperumero, I guess. Uh, Sperumero. Okay. Sperumero. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, Sperumero, I'm sorry. It doesn't have a U. But, uh, oh, but it has one here. 
Yeah. <laughs> what do I? Know? I always, you know, I always just say what's there. Right. <laughs> Even I agree when it's with you. not there, it's there. Right. right. Um, okay, so singer of uh, Seth, blah, 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 um, right now. That's right. Mm -hmm. Very good. So where is this, actually? Uh, let's so see. I didn't know there was song, song, song singers upset. I didn't know this. I didn't know they had... Um... Yeah, that, I think that's kind of cool. Um, the interesting thing, thing about Seper Meru is it has a temple of Seth. Um, oh, damn, yeah. Because the problem is they used it in a computer game. Um, and now... 20, 19 out of 20 links are going to be about the game. <laughs> but here it is, Seper Meru. A town in ancient Egypt, roughly located between Heracleopolis and Oxyrhynchus. Okay, so let's have a quick look at where that is. Because, oh, yo, look at that. I still have my... And I will have a look whether I can actually spell Oxyrhynchus correctly. <laughs> is this working? Let's see. Sorry for the resolution. Should be up here. I don't see it though. No, that's not helpful. Oh, here it is. Oxygen course. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, Heracleopolis is a bit further up here, direction of the Fayum. So somewhere in this region here is where we were talking about the Spermeru. And it had a, uh, oops, sorry about that. It had a Seth temple. Although I don't know if that's ba, 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 ba. prominence as a largely populated religious military and administrative center um, of the 19th known um, on the canal that went from the Nile to the Fayum. Um, oh, the meaning of the town's name near to the desert, is that what it means? Frontier country, and thus a suitable cult center for the gods Sudich. All right, very cool. Um, according to the Wilbur Papyrus, there existed two land-owning temple institutions. Within the main set enclosure is a Permeru. Okay, so apparently that's where our... Lady Renefa, or last time she was still called Nanefa, uh, was serving as a as a singer or priest priestess in this case. They're reading Sepper as Mir. Say again. They're reading Sepper as Mir. Uh, no, no, no. The Sepper is uh, a Sepper. Sepper. The Mir is here. What? No, I'm saying they they translate it as near to the desert. Oh. How are we getting that translation out of Sepper Meru? Oh, that's interesting. So I was thinking Sepper uh, to to reach. Yeah, me uh, too. Reach the desert. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of participle or something. It's not really near, you're right. Yeah. I don't, I don't think so. Good point. I just glossed over that. Just taking some license with their some translation. Some poetic there. license there. Yeah, you're right. Uh, let's have a quick look. Meanings of Sepper. I only know it as reach. Or to uh, arrive. Right to arrive. Really yeah, but none of that, none of that says near to me. No, not really. Good point. <laughs> Should we edit it? <laughs> <laughs> will, will it <laughs> uh, maybe later. Um, I routinely correct things that I see on, on Wikipedia, when it is obviously wrong. This I think we can let slide, right? Um, I confess, I didn't know Meru meant desert either. Me neither. Um, I know it as a harbor, which is the opposite of a desert. <laughs> nah, okay. <laughs> That's I'll leave it. <laughs> <laughs> leave it. My fingers are itching now. But you're right. And what is uh, is harbor? A white desert. Um, I don't know a word like this either. Okay, hmm. sounds like a good good thing to follow up on afterwards. Maybe that needs an edit. So that's me from the future. A quick comment on Sper Meru. Decided to look up where Wikipedia had sourced the translation near the desert from. And, uh, well, it's not coming directly from Gardner, but if you trace back uh, 
the the book it was cited in. Ultimately, you get to gardeners onomastica, Egyptian onomastica, um, and more specifically, volume two, page 110, 111. And uh, so here's our spare meru. And if you go a little bit further, he actually does say that, namely, the name Spermero means near to the desert and implies a position close to the western desert, etc., etc. So that all actually fits perfectly to what we were just looking at in Wikipedia. And checking in the TLA, the word Meru actually does exist for desert and with quite a few attestations here over a wide time frame. So all in order, no edit needed, um, apart from, of course, to this video. And back to the text. In any case, though, um, so that's where they live, and that's where she she is a songstress of Sutech, um, and her name has changed. It's now Renefa. All right. Um, it's been 17 years. She reinvented herself. <laughs> Right, right, right. He's right, the right, singer right. formerly known as Nana. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Luckily, she didn't replace by her name uh, her name by a symbol, right? So that's already. Uh, she did. Um... It's Egyptian. It's all symbols. <laughs> it's all symbols. Kidding, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, where were we? The H the is written terribly. If you look on the previous page, Hero um, is much nicer to read. It is here. Here, damn it. Um, so this is what a, an H should look like, H, R, W, and then the sun disk. But if you go over here, uh, the page that we're just on, you really have to know. This looks more like a pearl to me, but it's uh, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be an H, an R, a W, and a sun disk. And there's a determinative stroke, and the really weird thing is the determinative stroke is on the next line. I think that's kind of unusual. Normally, you would try to keep them together, but okay, it is what it is. Cherupen, so on this day, Jetten. Grammatically, this is a really interesting question, what that is. Jetten, that which was set by? Hmm. Maybe. Would it be an infinitive speaking or saying? Yeah, something like this, right? I'm just a bit surprised by the end there. Why? Is that supposed to be like in, like said by? Or, I mean, this is way too late for any kind of. Or oh, isn't it genitive, indirect genitive speaking? You mean or... like a like a participial statement? That, that's Jedi, what I'm, I'm Jedi thinking in. about. Yeah. yeah, but just feels. Words of. I guess the end is really a, a, a by. Um, what I'm basically trying to say is this is not a this is not a past tense end like for Middle Egyptian. This can right. only be like a, it's way too late for that. Those forms are dead by now. So this could only be an in then like said by. I'm guessing, um, but I'm a bit opaque on how this here works grammatically. Um, then here's our Kheri, which is his does central. Ellie does Ellie analyze this? He does not. He just said uh, la cosa detta di or da. Um, but and he the interesting thing is he has it as jedet and then space n, so he definitely sees them as two different words. Yeah. Which again goes to my theory that that he's reading it as a, like like a like an in for by. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. I guess. I mean, what else should it be? What else should it be? The demonstrative ten is dead by now. You only have it have it in fossilized expressions like like heru pen, uh, because that's like a, a fixed expression, but pen ten don't live. So this must be some kind of participle thing. Um the uh, heri is written with the sky glyph, so that's what you have here. Um and here's a reed leaf, a ch, a uh, a pair, so that's the on top of the stable, in other words, the stable master. Um, this is our nep, nep nefer. Um, this is our f here at the end of the nefer. Nefer al, um, has a little man as a determinative because it's a name. Chena together with nebet, nebet, 
No, Chimet. This is uh, is Chime. Um, so here's the T of the Chime. This must be a very small B1 woman. And then here's an F. Uh, so it actually says Chimtev. It does not say Tev Chime or Tev Eshime or something like that, like you would get in Coptic. But this still uses the suffix pronoun at the end. Interesting. Um... Why am I drawing a blank? Is this thing the singer thing? Let me go over here real quick. It is. That is the 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 semaglyph. I had no idea how to write this, to be honest. Um, hmm. Let's have a quick look how that how that is normally written. Uh, I remember, I looked it up before, but promptly forgot about it. Hmm. Bear with me. Yeah. So this thing doesn't look anything like what you would expect. Um, in older times, like I said, I'm not familiar with this one, but just going by what's here on Acupal, uh, it sort of looks almost like a like a complicated reed leaf. Um, then it gets that horizontal line as we go on in time. And looks like by our time now it is this this structure here, and then the vertical next to it, which is I think what we see in, in the the example we looked at just now. So that is this and this. But if you're having a hard time seeing that, so do I. When I was just looking at it a moment ago, I had no idea what this was. This is the the this the Shema glyph. And then the rest is clear. The rest is just like a double reed leaf. Um A2 man. But in this case it's a woman, so it has a B2 woman a B1 woman as well at the end. And it's N Sutech. So this here should all be familiar. That's our our sitting set. Um, but yeah, this is this is interesting. Seth is a god, of course. So he has the bird on a stick. This is our sepere. Um So this is this thing. Um, but really long drawn out. And they like to, to put everything else underneath it. We've seen that a few times before. So speru. And then this here is the walking legs. Like a little dot and walking legs. So that's that. A speru and not just speru, but... Sper Meru. So that's our Mer sign. An R. For some reason, two W's. Make of that what you will. And our city glyph here at the end. Okay. And her name is, like we had, Ren Nefa. So here's Ren. A2 man. Nefa. F. R. And B1 woman, that's what the dot is for up here. So to turn the A1 man into a B1 woman. Okay. Any questions or comments? Well, the, um, the Shamaid, did they replace the the regular Shama um, glyph for Shamaid? Or I, I kind of missed, missed, probably missed it. Yeah, that like I said, that tripped me up too. You know, it, it seems to have a completely different shape from... From, ah, okay. uh, what you would expect that's just what it looks like um and i couldn't tell you why i mean this here kind of makes sense to me i see this mm -hmm. like here's the hang on let me move so you would i mean naively what would you expect you would expect some big vertical and then like maybe two horizontals and that's sort of what that is right big vertical one horizontal and then maybe like a second horizontal the, look at the one to the left of that the one you're pointing to, the second one over, I think this it one? looks kind of like that. So imagine like a little two and then a long vertical next to it. I think that's what ours looks like. I think you're right. That's what it is because that's that's the direction it goes, right? Um, as you go along. Hey, look up Shema. At Shema? Yeah, the glyph for um, the sled, the, the vertical, I think it's a sled. It looks like a sled. And in, in, in uh, yeah, let's see if we got um, what it looks like an hieratic. I'm just curious. Uh, do you have a glyph number for me? Uh, Shema. Um, yeah, I don't remember the gardener code for that, Shema. I think it's a sled. It's not a sled. It's 
Masha, 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 Masha. It's in the word for followers. Um, or, or oh, companions. Oh, 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 okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, wait, but that's a completely different animal. Uh, no, no, no. It is, but in, in, in hieratic, I could have sworn in hieratic that the glyph looks similar to the one from the um, New Kingdom 18th Dynasty. I, I thought it said, I thought it kind of maybe resembles that. Let's take a look. Um, where are you? What is Shema? <laughs> That one doesn't have a, this one here, right? It doesn't have an iron in it, though. Uh, no, no, I understand, but like, in, in, how does it look in hieratic? Does it look similar sure. to, to, to this Shema? Let's have a look. T18. I love the acupuncture. But crab. it's not Shema. It's Shems. Shems. Mm -hmm. No, Shems. no, I, no I, I follow that. I'm saying, but in terms of sounds, Shem, the sh sound, like, can it be substituted? I could, I'm thinking I maybe it, it looks similar to each other. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. No, no, you're absolutely correct. You're, you're thinking of this, right? The, yes. Um, true, mm -hmm. true, true, true. And you're... It, huh. Good point. It yeah, look right looks, there. Look at New Kingdom 20th Dynasty. It kind of looks... You're absolutely right. It looks very similar. I mean, they look similar, but I can't imagine them misspelling the singer like that. Yeah, but that is the glyph we have on... Right, but it looks the same as the other one, though. Mm -hmm. So why would is it, is why would we assume then? it's a misspelling when the other one looks the same as this? No, the possible the database is wrong. You know, I, I don't I don't think it's a misspelling. I'm just saying sometimes Egyptians they'll substitute glyphs. They have these sound substitutions sometimes. Right, but I'm saying we just looked at the hieratic for the other one and it looks the same. So I don't think they are substituting it. No. I think they're just two signs that look similar. I think that's right. I think mm -hmm. it's just that that you have two signs that look very similar in hieratic um and happen to be somewhat similar pronunciation but hey the third the third radical is different um yeah. so i think it's what what Aaron is saying namely um coincidence basically coincidence because yeah no this this has to be sing songstress of or singer of 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 seth i think it's shamayit right so shamayit 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 mm -hmm. okay. that's right um okay let's see do you, do you think we can go on a little bit more um okay anybody wants to take it yeah i'll go where where are we at here where we it's... are at uh at nt or yeah at nt so we have renet or er, 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 no not renet ernet yeah, and there's probably like a like a T here. Mm -hmm. That's right. Eeny. In Eeny. In 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 in. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Now. I'll just do it like this, maybe. The the one N is too many. This is not a past tense. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a, a sedum and F. Mm -hmm. Even though it looks like one. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, hem. That's right. And then we have ready, ready, yeah. you, N E, mm -hmm. and we have hoot or het, hoot. Yeah. And I see something written above. Is that a T they wrote above? Okay, so hoot. Yeah, I guess, huh? Okay. T. Yeah. Right. Then we have um, Eri. That's right. And then it looks like after an E. Eri E. Yeah. You mean the, the, the last one here? Oh, 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 that's part of the word for Eri. Yeah. I think it is. Or it could be part of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's part of the word for Eri. Mm -hmm. The Egyptian does that sometimes. And we have Er, Sewen. Mm hmm. I think it ends there, right? I think the rest of those glyphs are probably determinatives for with women, probably. When in correct, women. correct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is correct. And there's one tricky part here in this whole thing. Um, uh, this here is not... I mean, note that I put, put dashes in between. The whole thing is a name. The uh, the dini huti iri. Is so the, the, the seated man is the marker for the for it being a name at the very end. Exactly, exactly. 
without that it's going to be really confusing so d d hot time what's the footnote at the top there i see it looks like t but yeah it is and uh let me see what he says i think it was from garden let's see it uh, egg there too i have to go but thanks for class see you see you next time thanks for joining um put note a correction above the l wait no which line are we in are we in six sixteen yeah sixteen a correction above the line <laughs> okay <laughs> let's take a look what what we have um on the left hand side here yeah it's a little t it's really just the t sitting on top okay Any idea what Sunu or Suwen is? Suwenu. So, so this word. Because that's the, the key to understanding the sentence. I've seen this word before in Middle Egyptian. Is it uh, Oh, I'm not sure if that's a Middle Egyptian. It may be. Definitely common yeah. in late Egyptian. Um. <laughs> I'm just looking at the spelling. Do I have it right? Soon, I think there could be a T at the end, which is not written here. So, uh, Sune is price. Um, and Iri Arisunu, um, Iri, Ini Arisunu is uh, to buy. Literally to bring, uh, to bring for a price. Um, so, Inen, Chem, or Chemit, Dini Huti Iri Ersune. So bring bring to us a servant. Um, Dini right. Enu. That's her name, yeah. Uh, literally, the name is Dini Huti Iri. Iri or Ereo in Coptic is a, a companion. Um, Dini could be uh, has given to me, right? Has given for me. A uh, huti ga um, gardener thinks that is short for for Hathor. So literally, Hathor has given me a companion. Is the name um, of the servant? Uh, that's assuming that the huti is, is read correctly. Uh, there is, I think, there was an an alternative interpretation. I forgot what it was. Um, Ellie also has it as Hathor. So, so uh, you had it correct, namely, uh, R A T. Um, the only question is, what is the inen here as a verb form? What could it be? Bring to, bringing to me. Uh, With a suffix pronoun at the end. It's not a sejim. It's not a sejim f, is it? Um, it is a sejim f. It's a sejim um, f. Without the subject here. Um, the subject would be the n. So. So so that's not part of the to bring to us or bring to. Well, that's the interesting question. So what exactly is is happening here? It says uh, it says inen. Forget about all the complexity. Um, inen x. Basically, Arisuno um, or Sune. Uh, if I were to say Sejimen, what would that mean? Just, just a word by itself. Um, bring, t bring to. Or you have it written out. Bring. Uh, if you, if you just, yeah, if you just take the, if you just take Sejim though, like Sejimen, N being written. Being written. We here. It's an infix. Is this is? We here. You had it. You had it exactly. Um, now, what tense though? Um, if it is said German, uh, is it we here? Is it we will here? What could it be? We heard. Correct. So it could be we heard, or it could be may we here. One of the two, right? You can't tell. It could be prospective or it could be past tense, but nothing else. Uh, one of those two. So now going away from sejim to ini. So if it says inen. It could be something to us, or oh, something we. Something we. So we brought. 
We brought and now Inan uh, Erisunu. So Ini as Erisunu is um, is to buy. So basically, Inan something something Erisunet is. Brought. We have bought. Mm -hmm. We bought servant. We so. bought a servant by the name of uh, Dini Huti or yeah Huti Iri or Iri. Um, uh, Hato has given me a companion. Okay. I think we have to cut here um, because we're already at time. But uh, essentially, so the next chapter that's opening is that there's a uh, there's some new entries to the family, namely a servant, and she's not alone. There's there's some more people involved, and I would say let's let's pick it up the next time. Cool. Thank you. Very all right. Very well done. Thanks all. Thank have you. Have a good weekend. Great weekend. <laughs>